after studying this module you shall be able to reflect on Walter Michel and Yuji Soda's life history, identify the cornerstones and the backdrop against which Michel and Soda's personality theory is based, understand the cognitive affective personality system CAPS as proposed by Michel and Soda, learn about the concept of delay of gratification and its effects. Evaluate the Cognitive Affective Personality System. Walter Michel began his theory of personality by treating the traditional and more prevalent theories of personality like that of trait and psychodynamic approaches. Michel quoted that with the possible exception of intelligence, Highly generalized behavioral consistencies have not been demonstrated and the concept of personality traits as broad predispositions is thus untenable. He criticized the major fundamental assumption about human behavior that emphasizes the broad dispositions that predict the consistency over situations. This forms the basic premise of the theory as put forth by Michel and Soda. Though various empirical studies, it was shown that individual behavior does not remain consistent across situation, which is a premise of trait theory of personality. The importance of situational context was thus highlighted by the authors. It was also concluded by Michel that the personality psychologists were looking for consistency in behavior at the wrong places. It proposed that situation should not be perceived as an error or noise while studying behavior. Rather, it was an important determinant of behavior. He has also proposed that consistency can be seen in the if-then situational concepts. A little later, Michel also began working in the area of delayed gratification and self-control through his famous marshmallow experiment. Tenets of the theory, Michel's challenge to traits and an emphasis to the situational context. Traditional theories emphasizes the importance of stable global characteristics that predict behavior across situations and thus also contribute to the individual differences that occurs in individuals. Walter Michel took the courage to challenge this basic premise that was being held by most psychologists. Through various empirical studies, he concluded that the average correlation between self-report measures and behavior was only about 0.30. This was called as the personality coefficient by Michel. It was also found by Michel and Peek that there were no consistency between traits such as contagiousness and friendliness and the individual's inner situational behavioral consistency. This consistency paragraph was bursted by Michel. Collinger stated that people who are honest in the classroom may cheat on taxes. Children who wait patiently in the presence of a parent may act impulsively when the situation changes. It was also found by Kim, Nishal wrote and Featherman that the religious beliefs and worldviews of elderly varied over different testing conditions. Michel also does not completely negate the importance of traits. However, what bothers him is the overemphasis of traits in even predicting unobserved behavior. He believes that traits are labels that are given to people for case of predictability. Through an experiment, it was also shown that a situational context is what helps in avoiding making overgeneralizations about one's behavior. Michel and colleagues asked participants to think of scoring badly in an important exam and then one set of students were asked to fill in a statement that said, I am dash when dash. 
and other set of students were asked fill up the statement I am dash. As predicted it was found that one will be less extreme when talking about a particular situation than otherwise. Thus like Bandura, Michelle adopts a micro approach to studying personality and behavior. Michelle and Soda develop models that depict how traits and various other factors influence behavior in situation. The figure depicts such an illustration where it can be seen that behavior is consequence of many conditions and not only the traits. Situations can thus be seen as triggers for activation of emotions and thought. Mood, fantasies, plans, goals and other internal reactions are triggered by specific situations. The psychological situation that a person is in therefore is not simply the objective situation but the subjective amalgam of that plus internal reaction to it. The importance of the situational context was highlighted again by Soda, Michelle and Wright. Her people were presented with situations and behavior that he expects unlikely. For example, the statement, child hits when provoked, was interpreted meaningfully however the statement, child hits when praise, was interpreted as if the child was odd, withdrawn or psychotic. The entire shift in the paradigm as given by Michelle has been labeled as the person situation debate in personality psychology. Michelle advocated that the person approach was an oversimplification and the situation approach seemed logically to him. Thus, Michelle advocated for a view that contended that behavior is shaped by personal disposition plus a person's specific cognitive and affective processes. He also emphasized behavioral specificity that refers to the individual's behavior that is determined by a specific situation. Thus, to encompass his theory, it can be said that Michel emphasized behavioral specificity rather than trade consistency. In this slide, Michel and Soda have proposed a cognitive affective personality system that encompasses both these approaches to understand and explain behavior. CAPS Cognitive Affective Personality System As discussed in the above section, Michelle clearly did not condemn the trait approach and the subsequent individual differences that exist and not even advocate that situation in what determines behavior completely. He simply put forth the idea that the people have a perspective that allows them to perceive and judge situations as being different from one another and that is what can be the reason for inconsistency in behavioral patterns. To solve the consistency paradox, Michelle and Soda propose the Cognitive Affective Personality System CAPS. The system incorporates both the consistency of behavioral patterns and also the variability in the lights of different situational contexts. This theory proposes that a person's behavior may show inconsistency from a situation to another but in a meaningful manner. It highlights that if-then relationship Michelle thus proposed to consider the processes underlying in an individual that helps in understanding the situation behavior inconsistency. These concepts have been derived from social learning and cognition thus called the cognitive social learning variables or cognitive personal variables. The behavior X displayed by a person A and person B across situations. As put forth by Michel, it can be seen that there is variability in behavior across situations. Thus, a person applies if-then 
to his situations and thus this constitutes the variability that is shown in the behavior. Michel and Soda developed a theory that provided an account of individual differences in cognitive and emotional responses to situations. Another schematic representation is shown in the figure which depicts the personality system as proposed by the authors. According to Michel and Soda and as seen in the model, personality is seen as a stable system that mediates the selection, construction and processing of social information that generates social behavior. Individuals differ in their selection of situations to attend to, in their encoding of situations and in their emotional responses to them. These differences interact with other individual mediating processes such as expectations and behavioral scripts and plans in determining behavior. Michel and Soda in their classic research quote in the proposed theory individual differs in how they selectively focus on different features of situation, how they categorize and encode them cognitively and emotionally and how those encodings activate and interact with other cognitions and effects in the personality system. The theory views the person not as reacting passively to situation nor as generating behavior imperious to their subtile features but as active and goal directed constructing plans and self generated changes and in part creating the situations themselves. The figures that over the time and if then relationship is created this will be distinctive as per the changing situations context. The organization and the relations among the units remain constant. However, different units get activated as per differing situations. Situational features are encoded by a given mediating unit which activates specific subsets of other mediating units generating distinctive cognition, affect and behavior in response to different situations. Mediating units become activated in relation to some situational features, becomes deactivated, inhibited in relations to others and are unaffected by the rest. The activated mediating units affects other mediating units through a stable network of relation that characterize an individual. The relation may be positive which increases the activation or negative which decreases the activation. These situational behavioral profiles are a characteristics and stable function of the underlying cognitive affective personality system. CAPS Thus, it can be seen that CAPS model provides an accounts for variability in personality and also the basic underlying structure that forms the basis of it. Another model as would be discussed later depicts the behavioral implication and the developmental influences on the CAPS. This model however is too recent and still being tested and verified. The following are the mediating units in the CAPS model that underline the individual differences in social behavior. Encoding strategies. Every person has different past experiences and these experiences contribute to different encoding strategies through which they describe situations. As debated earlier, behavior is influenced by situations but they are perceived, judged and interpreted in the light of earlier learning experiences that are highly subjective. The cognitive system is what determines an individual's interpretation of a situation and subsequent behavior. Each individual has his own ways to categorizing and making sense of the world. These cognitive processes are used to have view about 
other people and how they make meaning of the word. Personal constructs. Personal constructs are different from traits. These are constructs that people use to describe themselves and highly subjective and unique to each individual. Rather than judging personality consistency based on similar behavioral across many situations, a person looks for consistency across time in a small number of behavior that are seen as characteristics of a given trait. Competencies The ability to do and to think is what a person competency is. These are called an individual's cognitive and behavioral construction competencies. These competencies are highly subjective and thus vary from person to person. As given by Michel, a few examples of such competencies are sexual gender identity, knowing the structure of the inner world, social rules and conventions, personal constructs about selves, and others and rehearsal strategies for learning. Competencies have greater consistency across time and situation than do traits. How we behave depends in part on the potential behaviors available to us, our beliefs of what we can do, our plans and strategies for enacting behaviors and our expectancies for success. Michel believed that one gets to know of one's competencies by comparing and contrasting one with other people around. Self-regulation According to Michel, people use self-regulatory strategies to control their own behavior through self-imposed goals and self-produced consequences. He believes that people have the capacity and capability to set goals for themselves and do not need an external regulatory mechanism for the same. People themselves take charge of their behavior and move with an internal locus of goals towards self-set goals. Expectancies People's behavior is also determined by the specific expectancies and beliefs that people have about the consequences of their behavior. Knowledge of results determines a person's ability to perform to a great extent. Internal subjective expectancies determine performance. In a situation when people have no information about the outcomes, then people mostly choose to act in accordance with rewards and results as have been from past experiences. Moving on to similar lines, there are three kinds of expectancies. First, behavior outcome expectancy. This is an expectation about what will happen if a person behaves in a particular way. People usually solve this by using the if-then framework. For example, if I work hard, then I might stand first in class. Second, Stimulus outcome expectancy. This expectancy allows an individual to be aware of one's surrounding and also allows some control over predictability of behavior. This expectancy refers to the many stimulus conditions that influence the probable consequences of any behavior pattern. Stimulus outcome expectancies help us predict what events are likely to occur following certain stimuli. For example, my mom is worried so she may get angry with me, though this may not be the case always. Third, self-efficacy expectancy. Expectancies about whether one can carry out a specific behavior or not is what is termed as a self-efficacy expectancy. For example, will I be able to stand first in the class? Many other psychologists have taught upon this issue with different terminologies such as internal, external, locus of control by Rotters, helplessness by Seligman, mastery orientation by Duke to name a few. Michel and Audic thus put forth that a person's behavior would be consistent if there is a consistency in one's expectations. 
but expectations are usually not consistent and they are bound to change as humans have the ability to discriminate between various situational demands. Goals and values. Goals and values are highly subjective. The term subjective stimulus values is also synonymously used and is refers to the extent to which a person regards an outcome as desirable or undesirable. That is a person's goals or values. People choose to set their goals and have a highly subjective value system. People may have similar experiences in life but still have different goals and values. Goals, values, interest, competencies are stable cognitive affective units. Affective responses. This theory which is mostly cognitive in nature has a recently added affective component to it as well. We shall believe that cognitions and affective responses go hand in hand and in hand and thus it is difficult to consider them separately as many a times they tend to influence each other. For example, standing first in class will make me feel happy. Thus people's competencies, coping strategies, beliefs, expectations, goals and values are all colored by their affective responses. Self-regulatory system and plans. This is the most important cognitive person variable and affects an individual behavior to a great extent. It is very important for people to regulate their behavior as these influence one's environment significantly. Once a self-regulatory mechanism is delay of gratification which will be covered in detail later in the section. The figure illustrates Michel took to build a link between personality psychology and social psychology. This figure is an illustration of the CAPS theory that provides a comprehensive account of both the behavioral variability and personality stability. The figure depicts the CAPS in the situational context that is operates in it. The system generally predictable patterns of variation in individual's behavior. Cognitive affective units can also be seen as part of the model. The CAP system also get activated via its own feedback system through the cognitive system. The system allows for the cognitive systems and psychological aspects of the situation to get activated. Different dynamics due to different situation create diverse behavioral profiles for people. Behaviors create consequences that impact the psychological features of the situation, the encoding process and the affect. Thus this theory does not create a divide between looking at personality as either a product of disposition or a process. This theory proposed look at both the viewpoints simultaneously. Evaluative comments. Michelle's theory of personality as is Bandura's and Rotter's can be seen as contemporary scientific theory of personality. The inclusion of affective component in the social learning theory is a major step towards making it a complete model. Michel chose to think in a critical manner and thus proposed his theory despite the strong prevalence of the deep-rooted theories of personality. Michel describes general person variance and also articulate a link between the structural components of personality and the individual specific behaviors. Michel and Soda through their model argue that personality can be seen from the bio psychological viewpoint of understanding behavior. However, Michel and Soda's theory has also been criticized on the following ground. Many authors believe that Michel has not been specific about the mode of acquisition of these structural and dynamic units. It was also highlighted by Kretzwitz and Berlow that most of the researches on which the theory is based has been carried out on European Americans. The focus on a linear cause and effect model is not characteristics of many minority groups 
whose thinking is seen to be more likely to be circular and interpersonal in nature. Also taking an objective viewpoint in understanding behavior and people may restrict our vision in taking a holistic personality of humans. Despite all these criticisms, Michel and Soda model can be seen as an integrative paradigm for personality. Michel continues to broaden the scope of his theory to include both personal disposition and dynamic cognitive affective units that can predict and explain behavior. Summary Michel contended that the personality psychologists were looking for consistency in behavior at wrong places. He proposed that situation should not be perceived as an error or noise while studying behavior, rather it was an important determinant of behavior. He has also proposed that consistency can be seen in the if-then situational context. The consistency paradox was bursted by Michel. Michel also does not completely negate the importance of traits. However, what bothers him is the overemphasis of traits in even predicting unobserved behavior. He believes that traits are labels that are given to people for ease of predictability. Michel and Soda in 1995 developed models that depict how traits and other mediating factors affect behavior in situations. The entire shift in the paradigm as given by Michel has been labeled as the personal situation debate in personality psychology. Michel advocated that the person approach was an oversimplification and the situation approach seems logical to him. Michel and Soda has proposed a cognitive affective personality system CAPS that encompasses both these approaches to understand and explain behavior. The system incorporates both the consistency of behavioral patterns and also the variability in the light of different situational contexts. This theory proposes that a person's behavior may show inconsistency from one situation to another but in a meaningful manner. It highlighted the if-then relationship. Michel in 1973 thus proposed to consider the processes underlying in an individual that help in understanding the situation behavior inconsistency. There are many mediating units in the CAPS model that have been identified and that underlie the individual differences in social behavior.